So shooters and reloaders out there, Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to you from the hot lead zone. And look at uh, my little blaster here. Got a short barrel, like 20 inches, and it's light, 5.8 pounds. But that means it's going to kick a lot with heavy loads, but that's okay because if we're hunting, we're not going to feel the recoil at all. At the range, though, a different story. But we can practice at the range with lighter ammunition for sure. But that's not the purpose of this video. That's for another video. Now, as you know, I like to do new video information on uh, my channel, The Hot Lead Zone. And there are no other YouTube videos on Starline 454 Kasul Brass. There's videos on reloading the 454 Kasul, but nothing on the brass. And so you got to go with written reviews on the brass. Well, let's give you a video review on this fine 454 Starline brass purchased from Midway USA. Well, let's give you a little history of the 454 Kasul. And uh, that is uh, back in 1955, when the 44 Magnum came out, Elmer Keith did the work to cause that to come to being, as we all know. But what Elmer did was, he started with the 45 Colt and couldn't get any success because the guns blew up. They weren't as strong and the brass wasn't as strong. So that's when Elmer went to the 44 Special, hot rodded it, and got the 44 Magnum to be accepted by the gun makers and ammo makers. Well, back in those days, there was a lot of interest in lengthening cartridges, such as uh, the work of Elgin Gates and this kind of thing. Well, what Dick Casul did was, he looked at the 45 Colt and the problems with the brass not being as strong, so he got stronger brass by strengthening this area of the cartridge case, got uh, companies to make the brass for him, and then he lengthened the 45 Colt case, by a tenth of an inch so that the higher pressure loadings that he was doing could not blow up the old guns. Same idea that the 44 Magnum had having longer brass. So it was the work of Dick Casul to bring that into being as a wildcat and it took a number of years before the uh, SAMI organization went ahead and recognized the 454 as being a viable cartridge and produced uh, specifications for it and that's where the 454 became legitimized as a factory round and that was many years later I can't remember exactly the year but anyway that's the history of the 454 Kasul. So first let's go ahead and weigh each of the hundred cases in that box to see what kind of variance we get on weight. Then we'll do a measurement of the length of the brass to see what kind of variance we have with the length. So here are the results of the weighing of the brass. And you might wonder, well, you know what? A lot of videos, we take 20 random casings out of 100, weigh those, get the high and low, and then the extreme spread, the average, and that's representative of the whole 100, right? Well, just to test to see if that's true or not, I weighed all 100, got a high of 125.8 grains, a low of 123.6 grains, extreme spread of 2.2 grains, and the average is 124.8. Well, that's pretty good brass. The spread of 2.2 grains is not much. It's not as good as tight tolerances of Lapua brass, for instance, but we're not paying Lapua prices. And besides, we're talking about handguns, not rifle brass. We're trying to shoot rifle brass at extreme ranges to small MOA. Our handgun brass doesn't need to shoot MOA like that, so this is fine. And for the price of the Starline brass and the quality of this brass, very nice brass, as you see. I like this brass, even though it has a spread of 2.2. Now, to answer the question, why, why do all the hundred? 
why not just do 20 random? So I did 20 random, and the 20 random did not identify the extreme spread. It gave us a high of 125.5 instead of 125.8. So that heavy casing didn't get found in the 20. And why would it be, since we're only taking one out of every five? Now the low out of the 20 was 124.1, but out of the 100, the low was 123.6, a full half grain lower. So the 20 doesn't give us a good look at the 100. The extreme spread of the 20 was 1.4 grains instead of the extreme spread of the 100 of being 2.2. So it makes the brass look better if you only take 20. However, the average is pretty close, 124.7 grains out of the 20 compared to 124.8 out of the 100, which is only one-tenth off of the two. So if you take representative 20, you get a good idea of the average, but the high-low and the extreme spread is not identified just taking the 20. That's kind of interesting. So next time you see videos, including my own, that take 20 random, you got to kind of take it with a grain of salt. So shooters and reloaders, this is also interesting. Measuring the overall length of the brass, measuring all 100 separately, you get a high of 1.376, a low of 1.373, so the spread's only 0 0.003. That's not bad could be better but again that's not bad the average 1.374 inches now again taking 20 random cases you get a high of 1.375 so it did not identify the 1.376 but that's because random pick you you missed the 1.376 on the end but we did pick up the 1.373 low the extreme spreads 0 0.002, which is less than the spread measuring all 100. And the average is the same. So you get pretty close just doing the 20 random. But the, the measuring of the 100 is still better. So it looks like the Starline brass is 0 0.004 shorter than the trim 2 length as in the Lyman 50th edition reloading manual but that's quite acceptable we definitely don't need to trim our brass it's well within the consistency and a little bit shorter than trim two length is acceptable so I really like uh, the Starline brass in all calibers has been justified in liking the Starline brass I'll be buying more of this 454 Casul now that I've done a, my own review on this, and I'll probably go ahead and order some 460 Smith & Wesson brass while I'm at it. Bye for now.